Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's fantastic. Everything here is great. I, um, I almost brought my Kindle down with me today because today's topic, I have a topic today. That's a, that's a weird thing. Today's topic is, uh, was inspired by a book I'm reading. Um, and I'm sure we will probably do a review on that book, but, uh, because I'm, I'm very much enjoying it, but that it's not important for this conversation. What is important is the subject matter, I guess, kind of, eh, I don't even know if that's important, but the book is, a, a kind of a modern Western. I've talked about wanting to read modern Westerns. Um, this month is June on the range, which I have no idea why the, the June is the whatever, but it's a, like a book tuber reading challenge to read Westerns, uh, during this month. And so Saturday, well, Saturday, June 1st, whatever, whenever June 1st happened, I started reading a book called Open Season by C.J. Box. It is the first book of the Joe Pickett series, which I come to understand was a TV show for a while and is no longer on. Whatever. There's, I think, the 24th book or 23rd book got published this year, so it's a long-running series. And um, part of the reason I wanted to read it, number one, June on the Range. Number two, I've been like... I, we went to Colorado and fell in love with the Rockies. And so I was like, I want to read some stuff set in this area. And I discovered this, this is, um, this book is in Wyoming at kind of the Northern end of the Rockies. It's cowboy, but also modern. It's, you know, but here's the thing. So as I'm reading this book, I'm realizing just Wyoming, how, how familiar it feels. And specifically in relationship to the way life is there versus the way life is here. And I think that unless you've lived in small town America, you don't really know what it's like. And I, there is there is small town America like a place outside of Columbus or whatever. But this is small town rural America where there are no large towns. In Wyoming, their capital Cheyenne has, I think I looked up last night, has like 60,000 people, which is... Roughly about how many people live in Morgantown when the students are in. So when class is in session, there's like 55, 60,000 people. So some, that's the biggest city we have here. There, there's nothing. I have to go an hour and a half, two hours north to get to Pittsburgh. That's the closest big city. And even that isn't, I don't even think there's a million people in Pittsburgh. I think it's like a couple hundred thousand. So I live in a very rural compared to most, not most, well actually, yeah. Compared to most Americans, I live in a very rural area. And a lot of people just simply don't know what that's like. You know, where I live is like a, a kind of a vacation dreamland for some people. They're like, I'm going to go stay on the lake for the weekend and there's nobody around and that's magical. And to me, that's like, no, that's normal life. Like, that's just where I live. So I'm reading this book and then I, I watched an interview with the writer and he talked about how people, like, when he goes on book tours, they, they ask him questions that are just, to him, they don't make any sense. Like, somebody said, does everybody out there really have guns? And he's like, well, yeah. And I'm, I'm what I, to me, I think that that has shifted here, at least in my perception, that has shifted here from when I was a child. When I was a child, everybody had guns. Not that everybody was walking around with guns. But you would go to high school and the seniors would have their trucks with shotguns in the, in the rear window. You know, it was every truck in Walmart had shotguns on display in the window rack. Um, every house had at least one shotgun, one rifle. Like everybody hunted. It was a very normal part of growing up here. I grew up in an area where outdoor activities and... and um, kind of the adventure life was a normal part of my life. I spent, look, my favorite playground growing up was the woods. I went, you know, my parents lived in a subdivision, so the woods weren't, it's not like I walk out of the back door and there was woods, but it wasn't, 
it was a couple hundred yards away. So I had to walk up a hill to get to the woods. But I, I spent my life in the woods. I, I caught snakes. I hunted deer. I hunted rabbits. I hunted squirrels. I, I did outdoor stuff. I went fishing. Like, I learned all of these life skills that I think the majority of Americans just don't know about or, or can't comprehend, you know? I don't think that people can comprehend. Like, there's... Or the world you know i know my uk friends have just it baffles them that i have six or seven guns in my house that just blows their minds like what do you need those guns for i'm like well i have a shotgun in case i want to go rabbit hunting or squirrel hunting i have two shotguns actually i have one for rabbit one for squirrel so there's actually i have three because i have a spare for the 12 gate but i don't use it uh, <laughs> so there's that um i have a 30 30 lever action rifle like a cowboy action rifle that i use for deer hunting um and if i were to ever go hog hunting or maybe bear hunting i could take that rifle for that it would be good for both of those situations uh i have uh two pistols i have a 12 or a 12 i have a 22 caliber pistol which is kind of a target practice pistol and i have a 38 uh or 380 um which is a, a slightly smaller than what well, it's the same size as 9mm, just a smaller casing. Less Anyway, I, that is home defense, personal defense, that sort of thing. Um, Malia has a 9mm. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. Probably am. I feel like I'm missing... Oh, I have a 22 rifle that I would use for squirrel hunting. Uh, or maybe even uh, bird, but I, I don't really like hunting birds uh with anything other than a shotgun and i don't really hunt birds anyway uh so the 22 would be for squirrel um maybe i don't know raccoons or something if i were to go raccoon hunting but i use it mostly for target so you know there are it's just like any other tool um you're not gonna go hunt a squirrel with a 30 30 rifle because if you do that there won't be any squirrel left it'll just evaporate uh it'll just the it's just too big right so you have to, so in those kinds of things, like to a foreign, to a, to a person who is foreign to the idea of hunting or self-sustenance or whatever, or just having even personal defense weapons, all of those words I just said are just what? Like that doesn't make any sense. And I get it. But as I was reading this book about Wyoming and about this tiny towns and the politics there where the sheriff is kind of the king of the hill there it's not the rich people it's it's you know the movers and shakers are, are kind of the you know the lawmen who can kind of push their weight around and do some things uh you know uh some shady things um yeah that's that's what my life was like that's what i felt that's how this area has felt my whole life you know the the, the people of power are the people who can um bully essentially and not necessarily financially bully uh and so it felt very much like home you know reading these books i know the setting now now that i've been out there you know cj writes a lot about sagebrush and cottonwood and i've seen that now i i, I know what that looks like i can exp i can visualize it experience i've walked through it uh whereas here you know i don't we don't have that we have forests that are pretty dense uh significantly more dense than the forests that i experienced in colorado uh, lots of underbrush, lots of lots of dense growth forest, um, and so while the social political atmosphere feels like the same, uh, the terrain is different, and and the you know there aren't people well there are people around here that have horses and go riding, but that's like like an activity, whereas out there it seemed like you know uh, to go be a game warden in the rockies you basically have to have a horse like you you know so being kind of that cowboy mentality is almost a necessity for them uh not so much here so there are differences but and maybe just kind of think about how different it is for people who aren't aware of what it's like to live here or grow up here um so i wanted to put that out there and and just say like if you have questions i'd love to answer them um because i feel like it's a very unique experience growing up in rural America. Uh, and, and maybe it's not all trailer parks and, and white trash, I promise. Got questions? Put them down below. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing.
being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know sounds smart is voluptuous. It is an adjective meaning anything arising from or giving extreme sensory or sensual pleasure. A voluptuous banquet was the highlight of the, ma the Masterly's Thanksgiving Gala. Voluptuous. V-O-L-U-P-T-U-O-U-S. So I always assumed that word meant kind of full-figured. Like a woman is voluptuous if she's full-figured. Um, is that wrong? I, don't, I wouldn't think a banquet could be voluptuous. That's just not how I understood the word.